Andy tube. In this video, I'm going to show you how I remove the presser bar system on a Singer model 503A. This would also cover the 500 and 500A. They're basically the same. So, um, I I strongly recommend that before you try and move any of the presser bar uh, assembly and systems that you remove the needle bar. And I posted a video, I made a video how to remove and replace. I'll try and put a link to it at the end of this video. So if you're not familiar with that you'll know how to do that. But you really should remove the needle bar uh, first before you move, remove the presser bar system. And the other thing that you need to do is to remove the presser foot and the thumb screw that holds the presser foot on. So the presser bar system of course applies pressure in varying amounts onto the presser foot and therefore onto the fabric when you sew. And on this 503 model you control the amount of pressure with this dial and the dial is numerated from I think 9 down to D which is hardly any pressure which is for darning back in the day so when you go to remove this uh, system you want to turn turn the dial way past the one all the way to the D and you can kind of see that it removes pressure on the spring and then you also part of the system is the presser bar lifter right so you want to raise uh, no I think I think it's better lower that down lower that down so there's no pressure so the dial all the way to the left or back of the machine to D will show in this little metal window space over here and you can you'll also be able to tell the pressure is a lot lighter now you got to start with removing um, these two screws right here and my experience with uh, the other 500 and 503 I've worked on is that these are some of the hardest screws I've ever removed and they're, they're small you know and, and you wouldn't think it would be uh, any any big deal um, but I think it's because this is one of the areas that gets frequently oiled and a lot of oil gets in here and on this silver bracket and then dries up and new oil and dries up and new oil and dries up so it's it's almost kind of like they're glued in so what I usually do and what I did on this machine uh, before actually did it yesterday evening was I, I took my little screwdriver bit and put it in the slot made sure the slot was clean and my bit could get in and I tapped on it with my with my little hammer like that and then I also with the hammer tapped a little bit on the bracket the reason I use this jeweler's hammer is it's brass and it's going to dent and scratch before the aluminum or steel will. So I do that just to hope to break free some of the varnishing and stuff that's on there. Then uh, I put penetrating oil on it. And I actually left that on there, I think, just a couple hours. Went and did other stuff outside. And then when I came in, I ran the hair dryer on high on this area for about five minutes, which heated it up real good. And then 
I let it just cool. You know, I went to bed that night, but um, heating it up and then letting it cool back to room temperature can expand and contract the metal, which can also help. And it seems like a lot of work for a couple screws, but uh, I've worked on a lot of machines where I can't get these screws out because somebody else attempted and, and the heads are just stripped, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a shame. So uh, if you do this, maybe your machine will be different. But to me, it's worth the time that I spent. You know, you can tap them. You can you can uh, spray penetrating oil and be doing other stuff on the machine or some other thing or watch a movie, you know. But let me get in here a little bit. And these two screws, they hold the bracket here, this, this uh, silver bracket, which is for the dial assembly. And that's where we've got to start. So I'm fully expecting that I'll be able to take these two screws out without doing any damage. Okay, that one came free. Let's see if I can mm. <laughs> You can see that the dial assembly bracket's kind of wiggling now. Let me get see if I can get these out, and I'll I'll show them to you. And you can see how easy the dial bracket comes off once you remove the two screws. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's funny because. I'm sure in the service manual it says after you take these screws off, remove the the dial bracket and assembly. So they're not, you know, they're just a the regular screw. But when you take them out and you look in there close, you'll see, uh, if they were hard to get out, you'll see a lot of varnishing and stuff in there. So put those two in my mag tray. And let me look down here on the floor. There we go. And here is the bracket. So if you're looking at the machine from the front, that's what you see. Right? And here's the here's the two little holes where that sits inside the nose like that. Okay. And here's the back. It reminds of the 513 I recently did. And you can remove, <coughs> excuse me, you can remove the dial from the bracket with this screw. If you, whoops, you can remove this screw right in the center, and that will remove the dial from the bracket if you'd like to do that for cleaning purposes. And it's just a swivel screw. You turn it in all the way, and the dial can turn. Okay. So, turn this back here and we'll get a closer look at what is underneath there. Take pictures as you go, so when you go to put it back together, you can remember, um, you know, the sequences. Okay, in this next in this next part, what we want to do is remove this extension pin, and that extension pin extends from the back of the dial down into the top of the presser bar, and there is a spring associated with that, and that's what puts the actual pressure. So to remove that. Um, what, what I do is I loosen this screw on this guide bracket and then I can drop the needle bar down a little bit to have room 
to pull out the extension pin because with the uh, swing bracket and stuff up here it's it's kind of hard to get it up out of the needle of the presser bar so if I just come in here and loosen this set screw a little bit and yeah, maybe loosen it a little bit more. I put a little of the penetrating oil up there too. Uh, I'm getting some movement now on the presser bar. It's probably as bad looking as the <coughs> excuse me as the needle bar was. See, I've got that fairly low. Let's see if I can pull this up and tilt it forward toward me. There. And there's the extension pin. Yay! Look at that. That's a pretty long, pretty long spring. I, I actually forgot how long that spring was. So they separate. There's the spring, and this is the extension pin. So that's good, we got that out. Then we want to take this bracket out. It's just a guide bracket, and it's, it has a tab that slides up and down here to keep the presser bar sturdy when you're when you're raising and lowering it you know so let's see if I hold on to the needle bar if I can there we go and it'll it'll come out the top of that slot it's a little slot right there that it that it goes in and out of Okay, and then while I'm thinking about it, I'll kind of turn that set screw back in so I don't lose it. All right, so can't pull the needle bar up, can't pull it down. Uh huh. Okay, so when the manual says remove the needle bar I don't I don't know who they think I am but <laughs> this set screw right right here that you see the small set screw in the front um, that mm, that holds the pressure bar bushing in place. Let me tilt this back. See that silver tube right there going up into the casting of the machine and sitting flush with the base of the nose right there. That's called the pressure bar bushing. That's what the bushing slides through. And that bushing also holds, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to show you that, but it, um, let's see, maybe if I turn it this way, it also holds the lower thread guide in place. This is kind of an S-shaped flat piece that, that uh, has a, tail goes in a hole and it goes into a groove on the back of the bushing and then it comes up here and wraps around the needle bar which I have out and then that's the lower thread guide when you're running your thread to the needle and that's so that's held in place with this bushing and that's a good place to clean too okay to get the bushing out, 
we'll take out the one set screw then. And this this is a good one where it it has helped to put penetrating oil, heat, tapping it first. I think I I think I'm gonna leave it in there because I usually tighten it back up and leave it in there so I don't lose it. So the bushing you see it's flush at the top here and the bushing has to come down because of that uh, thread uh, thread guide so oh good see okay so there is the thread guide and you see that pin that sticks up on this end fits into a little hole under here and it wraps through a slot of the presser bar bushing and then around the needle bar. Let's see if I can get that the rest of the way out here. Put that down for a minute and there we go. Come on, you is it gonna yeah, whew, tight fit, but it comes out. Yeah. Oh good, so you can see where my penetrating oil got in there. If you take this out, be sure and run a, a brush or cleaner through there because it's going to be pretty pretty gunked up in there. Can you see that uh, groove that's cut right in there? Right in the side of that? This by the way is the thread cutter. You can drag your thread over that and it'll cut your thread after you make your stitch. But that that groove is what this uh, thread guide slides into just like that. So it rests in that groove so when you put it back up into the body that point goes into the machine and that groove stick it all the way up flush and that's what will hold this thread guide tight okay glad to get that out um, let me just put that back in for now so I don't lose it not all the way, I don't want it dragging on the bar. But now, with the presser bar out, my, you can lean the top of the, or with the bushing out, sorry, now you can lean the, you know, it's got more room to play, so you can lean the top of it towards you a little bit and finally achieve your goal of removing the presser bar. There it is. And there is where the bushing would go. Okay. So after that, kind of the last part of the system here, presser bar, is the lever. And it is held in place by this um, swivel screw. It's tightened all the way in, but has a little gap there so that you can raise and lower the presser bar by pushing up on the bracket. And the little rocker arm that you see, let's see if you maybe can see. You see it over here? Uh, see if I can rotate that a little bit and get that. Turn the arm shaft here. I already took off the hand wheel. There we go. Get that up out of the view. So this little rocker arm. There we go. That goes over and will push on the pin in the... Uh, 
tension unit, which I've removed, <laughs> but that's what releases tension on the disc. That's what that is. That's really part of the tension system, though. So anyway, let's see if I can get a better size screwdriver bit and see if we can get that uh, last part of the presser. It's just a personal preference to take that out. You know, if you just want to clean it in place, it's okay. It's okay by me. That, that felt pretty good. Now it's just a screw. There's not a washer on it because it's a swivel screw. Is this gonna is this gonna show up okay here? Yeah. Now let's see if I can get that screwdriver in there. Hey, I thought I just checked that. Oh, there. Okay. Oh, good. This one was this one wasn't bad at all. Probably because I put so much heat there last night with the hair dryer. Hey, there we go. Okay, so there's the swivel screw that holds the presser bar lifter in there. And here's the presser bar lifter. And here's the back side of it, which has a little molded pin that sticks out there. And that pin is what this rocker arm piece uh, rests on and that's what kind of kind of rests on that pin back there and when you move it that's what makes the rocker arm move so yay now you see how easy that was it's just like a little bit of a, of a puzzle you know even buying the service guide or having the service guide doesn't always tell you all the little maneuvers. <laughs> uh, you know, like where it says, remove the presser bar. And so, okay. <laughs> remove the dial. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the removal. And usually I would, you know, clean all that and stuff. But I'm going to show you how to put it back in so that you don't have to wait for another video okay so let me get set up for that okay let's get started now with the reinstallation I'm just gonna put this old cloth here in case I, if I drop a drop a needle bar or the bushing or something I don't want to chip in the paint <laughs> um, so we're gonna you know uh, put the parts back in in reverse so we're going to start with the presser bar lifter lever and the swivel or hinge screw I guess hinge screw would be more accurate and that's simply going to go uh, back in place and get tightened all the way um, down I turn this a little so I don't like that. The idea of how that hinge screw works is just that the very top under the head there's no threads. It's a smooth milled surface so that the screw can be tightened but that the lever can be lifted, you know, up or whatever the hinge screw is used for. Then we're going to have to do this uh, back out a little bit, kind of tricky little maneuver here where we want to put the bushing in, but we have to have the needle bar kind of 
in there at the same time kind of deal. Um, and the way to remember the bushing is that little angled groove that's the thread cutter that goes to the bottom and kind of faces to the back. Okay, so let's see if I can, can I get this started down here. There we go. So I just kind of drop the pr presser bar down inside there and then I better make sure that my set screw that I tightened up there a little bit is backed out enough that it won't conflict with the presser bar because it, it kind of feels like, huh, oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm just going to turn that a little bit towards the back. That uh, that groove for the thread cutter and then I don't want to push it all the way up yet because I've got to put that lower thread guide in there and that pin we talked about before has to go up into a hole and then the edge on the back slides into that groove of the presser bar and you can turn the machine upside down when you do this if that will help or just kind of do it by feel. I kind of get it down a little bit uh, lower where I can see it slide into that groove. I can see the thread guide slide into that groove and then start raising it up and you'll a good way to know if you've got it in there right is that that thread cutters um, you know straight to the back and the little thread guide for the needle thread is straight to the front and then be sure and push the bearing or bushing up as far as it'll go it'll it'll stop when it gets uh, when it gets level um, here with the casting. So there's a little bit of wiggle room left and right so just do your best to center it in there and let's see if we can kind of leave it sit in there a little bit Hey, okay. Because what else do we have to put in there? Yeah, we got to put that uh, guide. That guide has to go on there. And we have to put the spring and this extension pin thing got to put that in the needle bar too so I'm wondering once that extension pin is in there I'm gonna have a hard time sliding that over the presser bar right so I'm thinking maybe I'll lower that down and put the screw in or the screw <laughs> the spring down get that started down in there and then I could slide that I don't know how good of a see I can slide that over the presser bar but don't forget you got to put that tab extension into that sliding groove so let's see if I can see I raise the presser bar up a little bit and my my set screw I put back in is blocking uh, it's too tight so oh man 
that's the wrong screw bit I forgot I changed bits let's see if I can just twist it out with my fingers a little bit there we go oh there we go okay so that's that's going nothing's been tightened down yet but it's kinda staying together there so how about this extension pin thing I got room up on the top to get it down in there eh almost if I lower the presser bar a little bit more there we go I think I'll push it down in so the point gets caught in that tip of the spring there that looks pretty good I think I got that in right I'm gonna push this back up okay I'm feeling pretty good about this now and I'm wondering if I should put the dial assembly and bracket back on here okay it's actually kind of funny I was discombobulated there trying to uh, put the pressure dial assembly and bracket and stuff back before we got the needle the, the uh, presser bar finished up because then you don't get access to the set screw here and you can't really do it so that's my mistake but I got it set up here now and uh, a, cup, a couple of things with this um, since we got the presser bar back up in the bushing and we've got the thread guide back there we can push this bushing all the way up and uh, get it centered so the thread cutters in a straight back and the lower thread guide is straight facing the user and then we can tighten this set screw up now sure it's all the way up yep okay nice and tight I want the bushing moving okay so you'll notice here that I've put the presser um, foot back on with the thumb screw and I've just set the needle plate I had removed the needle plate feed dogs and things but the needle plate should be in place and it should be flat and the feed dogs should be below the needle plate so you can turn turn the hand wheel or whatever because the height to set this at the right height is what we want to do and the height is measured from the top of the mm, needle plate to the bottom of the presser foot that's the height and it's very easy on the 500 and the 503 because it's 5 16th of one inch 5 16th of one inch and as luck would have it one US quarter a quarter of a dollar in the United States is a sixteenth of an inch thick so it's real easy to get five of those and uh, set them under the presser foot raise a lever right and set them under the presser foot here and we want to line up that presser foot with the feed dog slots on the needle plate so we know we have it facing directly forward so 
you can look from the front here and you can see the toes of the mm, presser foot and you can see the two slots for the feed dogs and make sure you're lined up with that sitting on top of your five quarters the presser bar lever up okay there we go the guide bracket resting on the lever and then you simply tighten this screw set screw back down against that presser bar and that's what's going to keep it held at the proper height okay then we can remove our four quarters and we can lower whoop, lower come on down there's no pressure on the spring yet there we go and then just check your alignment make sure you're lined up straight you might have to redo it if you're not but that's all it takes to set the height of the presser bar on a Singer 500 or 503 is a little stack of five quarters five sixteenths of an inch okay make sure we get some movement here again it's not coming down because there's no pressure on the spring but yeah okay now guess what now we can really <laughs> we can really put the bracket uh, back on now because we've tightened the lever screw we've tightened the set screw for the pressure bar bushing and we've tightened the set screw onto the presser bar at the right height so now we can put the dial in place okay So, as I said before, probably a couple times by now, we're going to turn it so that D is in the viewing window, in the metal viewing window, and hold it at that position. And we're going to put the end of that extension pin into this metal slot on the dial bracket yeah okay then we'll line up let me check my camera make sure I'm still good here we'll line up these holes with the hole in the casting and then you know, put these little screws in I think I had the best luck maybe with just trying to tighten with a fingertip Oop. okay the hardest is getting the first one in oh see that <laughs> Let me try the other one. <laughs> I thought I actually had it twisted into the threads a little bit. Come on, you. know that's not in there but let me get the screwdriver on there and I'll turn it backwards a little and try try again I'm wiggling the bracket around too trying to line up the where I'm standing here like behind the side of the camera it looked pretty good to me but obviously not not enough to make the screw happy anyway. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
I can peek I can peek from back here a little bit and from this side and make sure that the end of that extension pin is in that slot and then to double check it I'm just going to put uh, my finger back here underneath that extension pin put my fingertip on there and start turning the dial to one two and I can feel that I'll put it back on D I could feel the pin starting to move down so that is a little just a little assurance for me Where my screw go now that I still I do have that pin in the in the slot so now that I have verified that I will get my other screw and get it started in here oops come on baby yeah and I just gonna snug these down a little bit and then I'll come back with my hollow point screwdriver to tighten them firmly. Okay. And then I'm going to test by turning this and feeling resistance. Yes. Okay. And it gets harder and harder to turn as I go up towards number eight. Okay. And easier and easier as I go back from eight down to one and then darn. So let me put it with four in the window, which is about average, and feel that good resistance. Okay. So now that's how to reassemble it if you've removed it for cleaning or replacing some damaged part. And the sequence and how to set the correct height between the top of the needle plate and the bottom of the presser foot at 5 sixteenths just by using the five quarters. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for tuning in and uh, check back with me when you have time see if I've got some other good videos take care